What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Cam ATL. Shout out to the DFS squad. Shout out to everybody watching this video right now. Drop a like down below because I already know you're going to love it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You know what time it is. It is time for my uncle and I to come together and give you guys this fire like we have been doing. Welcome to the Fantasy Locker Room Podcast. How you doing, Craig? Oh man, I'm having the opposite problem as what I was having last week when we built that lineup, uh, when we had our lineup build episode, if, the, if the everybody remembers, and that's thanks to our boy Trent Taylor. Man, Trent, I'm still a little butthurt over that. I'm not going to lie, uh, you you let me down really bad, so uh, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm still trying to recover, my man. It's all good, man. We still dropped 156 with Trent Taylor's 1.5. So that's fine. Bounce um, back. In this lineup, it, we're bouncing yeah, back. Yeah, this lineup, we're definitely going to we're, – we're aiming for like 170 plus. I mean, that's really what we want to get. That's really what our goal is. That would top all of the lines that we've made so far. But all of the lines me and him have created so far have cashed in everything. So let's go ahead and keep that mojo going. Let's start off at quarterback, Craig. Who are you liking at quarterback in this line? All right, guys, I'm going to – Go straight for my one of my hall pass guys this week. He just so happened to be on the Millie Maker winner uh, last week, and that's Brian Hoyer with this matchup against Washington uh, without Josh Norman playing. I think that raises his floor and ceiling combination. I have I see potential for this game to shoot out, and I just love this spot for Brian Hoyer and that price. I'm I'm locking him in this lineup. Yeah. You okay with that? I totally agree. I totally agree, man. At 5,100, Hoyer going against the Josh Normanless Washington team. I mean, Norman doesn't just shut down number one receivers. I mean, he up he uplifts that whole defense. So I think that this whole and with Hoyer having the boy Kyle Shanahan play, calling his plays. I mean, yeah, it's it's a good and it's a good game to target as well. I agree. All right. For me, at running back, I'm going to go Kareem Hunt at home in Kansas City going against this Pittsburgh team that has not been good this season. I think Hunt has a huge game here in this matchup against Pittsburgh. And at 8,200, he's one of my favorite plays of the week. I mean, Fournette went for 34 last week. Jordan Howard, week three, went off for 35. And that's Jordan Howard. Kareem Hunt's a better talent. I love Kareem Hunt to get... I think he gets 30-plus here in this matchup. Yeah, so he's one of my favorite in. plays on the slate period. Uh, I actually like him more than I liked Le'Veon last week. We all know how that turned out, so ho- hopefully I don't curse us, guys. Yeah. But he's in a great, great spot, <laughs> and, man, I just I love Kareem Hunt. But I'm going to echo that. So you took Kareem off of your hall pass list. Uh, my turn. I'm, getting, yeah. I'm pulling one off my hall pass list, and I'm going to give you guys Leonard Fournette safest running back on the slate guys i think he is prime like it yeah he's got oh yeah man he's been running the ball more than anybody else so far he he has more rushing attempts than than anybody else in the league he does get a little bit involved in the uh reception game too not that heavily but hey he's just got a a high floor and i really like him this week and i feel comfortable on cash he's going against a yeah he's going against a rams team that Gave up 24 to Carlos Hyde week three. And then came back and gave up 29 to Ezekiel Elliott the next game. Leonard Fournette is just as good as those guys. Um, He's better than Hyde. Uh, I wouldn't say he's better than Zeke, but he has the potential to put up more I would, than Zeke I would did say last he's time. Better so. than Zeke right now. The way that I've been watching them play, I watch every snap that Zeke's played, and I've watched quite a bit. I'm just saying overall. I mean, Zeke's got a lot going right, on with him exactly. too. So his production he's been putting up, he's also got that suspension in the back yeah. of his mind too. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not really gonna count what he's done so far. The shit he did last year was just right. ridiculous. So I'm not gonna completely say Fournette's better but yeah I, I love Fournette. Stuff last year Zeke being a rookie running back beasting I mean look at our two running backs here in this this lineup so far it's two rookie sensations <laughs> two rookies. man and they feel like they're the safest yep. with the probably the best upside on this slate so let's go yeah, all right man uh, why don't you yeah. give us a pick all right a wide receiver I'm gonna go with Chris Hogan for New England I just feel I feel awkward not putting a Patriot into the line, especially a guy on that Patriot offense. 
Um, especially with Chris Hogan, he's just got a great floor, man. I mean, yes, he got three week one, but they were just trying to get it together. Their connection between Brady and Hogan is locked in. He's gotten 18, 22, 17, 21 the last four games. And now he gets to go against the Jets team who is not good at all. Week two, they gave up 32 to Michael Crabtree. Um, week three, they gave up 21 to Devontae Parker. I mean, Chris Hogan's in for a big game here as well. So lock in Chris Hogan. Yeah, at 7, I agree. 000. And you, you basically just jacked me from my hall pass guy. Okay, this guy was on my list. So oh, I'm going to be the I same mean, to you, bro. Yeah. I mean, it's it's only fair to give you some payback. All right. So <laughs> the guy that I'm going to put in my list right. is or on the on the lineup is from Cameron's hall pass list and that's going to be adam thielen all right (laughs) adam thielen locking him in my favorite saying at home in his dome all right he's playing against green bay green bay is still going to score the ball against that stout minnesota defense and uh case keenum is going to have to throw the ball to keep up with green bay and guess what guys stefan diggs has been ruled out that is only going to help adam thielen okay thielen's locked he's locked Remember, guys, just because my uncles put him in this lineup, he was in my hall pass. Remember that. Um, hey, let me get the next. Guy. Let me get the next guy because he's a hall pass member of mine, and then you get the flex, all right? All right. And w- in our last wide receiver spot, we're gonna put another one of our. It's, he, he's kind of a value this week. I just love. I I love the potential for this game to shoot out once again at home in his dome, and that's John Brown. All right, John Brown is going to ball out. At 4,500, <laughs> he is going to give us that value. There is not going to be any Trent Taylor raping of the lineup like last week, guys. Yeah. I mean, look, look, dude, let me say something real quick. In, the, in the, every game that John Brown has played in this year, he's played in three games. He was out versus the Colts, out versus Dallas. Game, week one, he got eight. Week four against San Francisco, he got seven, and against Philly, he got ten. This is a great matchup because John Brown mans the slot, and Tampa Bay has been giving up a shit ton to slot receivers. Okay, and you know John Brown's got it right around that ten point floor, so it's a good cash game guy just to put there. He's cheap, good option, man. I love John Brown. Yeah, I like this it. lineup you is do tight end sexy. Too, so uh, and man, we both love this tight end. We're gonna pair him up yeah. with our boy Hoyer. Just so happened this quarterback tight end combination was in the Millie maker. The reason I'm bringing that up, uh, we're going to answer a question from one of our followers on YouTube that posted a question in the comments. And uh, so it happened to be about Hoyer and Kittle. So Kittle, George Kittle is our tight end on this lineup, guys. At 3,400 against this Washington team that is not doing very well against tight ends this year. He's a great value, money-saving option to put in the big boy running backs that we have in and that's why we love Kittle and we're pairing him with our guy Hoyer yeah all right you got anything to add with that yeah I mean I it just watching that game it just looked like literally like Kyle Shanahan wants to get his tight end involved more now you know what I'm saying and and it just looks like it's not something that's going to be a fluke you know and I mean especially against Washington that's how you attack them um, Zach Ertz dropped 17. Jared Cook dropped 14. Travis Kelsey last week dropped 27. So yeah, Kittle at tight end's a great safe play. Good guy to match up with Hoyer. Um, yeah, so I love it. In the flex, another hall pass member dropped the flex for you guys. Jarek McKinnon, yeah, Jarek McKinnon, guys. Um, he showed out. He's one of those guys that man, like every time last year when he got his opportunity, he put up whether it was receiving. Um, like catching the ball, whether it was just breaking some good little runs. Like he's a solid player. He just doesn't get many opportunities. Okay. But Jarek McKinnon is a great play here against Green Bay. Green Bay struggles against pass catching backs. Okay. And Jarek McKinnon is a good receiver. They are at home in Minnesota. Okay. I just love it. (laughs) <laughs> right like and, and when yeah. you get a guy like Jared McKinnon who's gonna be the guy you know 
I mean, you got to take advantage of that. And especially at 4,100, because they played on right. Monday night, his yep. price didn't adjust to his performance. So we're able to take advantage of that. You there have is to do no it, way that this price would have been 4,100 had this game happened on Sunday uh, during the regular slate. So, yeah, man, that that no. is way too low for McKinnon with this potential. Um, so, yeah, I love that. Uh, and then we go to defense. We disagree a little bit on this, guys. I'm not. We're not going to split hairs. Cameron loves Jacksonville. Uh, I have the money to put in Baltimore. I probably just put in Baltimore to be safer. Um, but Jacksonville's D is legit. Yeah. Guys, it doesn't matter which way you go. Yeah, like we're saying, I mean, you've got 3,700 after all those guys are in our lineup. You have 3,700 left over. I personally like the Jaguars. Uh, I mean, the Rams defense has looked okay this year, but it's still Jared Goff. And Jacksonville's at home, and this defense has been ridiculous. But I love the Ravens' D as right. well. So me and my uncle are right on with that. So you can play either one. Just go with your gut Let me personally. echo a little bit of that. Uh, I also like below both of them going down to Atlanta. Uh, just I, I basically like all three of these. It's, it's kind of a, a toss-up. I, I will yeah. tweet out to my followers out of these three by the end of the week on Sunday, which one I actually love the most if you want to go with that. But right now I'm, I'm leaning Ravens uh, just up against Trubisky. I know he looked good, you know, this past game, but yeah, he's still a rookie and he's going to be on the road. Uh, you know, Baltimore's D is pretty sticky. So I just feel safest with the Baltimore defense. So that that's why. Yeah, Baltimore should be. A, yeah, they should be a great choice. I mean, like we said too, Falcons at home in their dome going against this Miami team that just can't get it together. It looks like Devontae Park is Devontae Parker missing. Yeah, I think Devontae Parker is going to miss this game. I, I believe he's already been ruled out. So I definitely like the Falcons' potential to really shut down Miami, which yeah. has looked anemic in their offense so far. Yeah, they have. They really have, man. And look, uh, if you don't decide to go Falcons defense and you go elsewhere, oh, yeah. I'm not going to fault you for even throwing Jarvis in a lineup. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I like I think that. He's going to be hey, let's get last takes. Targeted. I wanted to update something. Uh, one guy that we didn't mention in any of our videos, I noticed. I went back and listened who I'm kind of on now. Is Jamison Crowder? I went and looked at some of the notes. They're coming out of their buy, and they're, you know, talking about the squeaky will getting some grease. Yeah. You know, like wanting to feed him the ball more and stuff. The coach came out and said that. Dude, that's smart, right? And you guys know that me and Cam are kind of not in agreement with Terrell Pryor. So, I somebody somebody's gonna be uh, catching balls over there. I like and, Terrell, and I think it's gonna <laughs> be Jamison Crowder. Uh, I also like Jordan Reed. You know, we haven't mentioned much about Jordan Reed, but he's finally – He leaves with a concussion every game. I, I know, but I'm just saying there's a lot of targets there, and, uh, you know, picking the right, right ones no, is going to be tough. I like Crowder because he's only 4000 so if you're looking for a money-saving option there. Right. Any other last takes of guys maybe you came on too late that we didn't talk about too much? Um, You mentioned earlier to me uh, Mark Ingram. Yeah. Um. I'm with you on Mark. I like that that play. I think he's got that 10-point floor. If you're playing in cash games, he's a great cash option and a money saver. He's super cheap. Yeah. Uh, so I like him. And I also like Case Keenum uh, going against Green Bay. Uh, I like the Keenum-Thielen stack with no digs. Uh, I just think that ends up being nice, man. I mean, Green Bay's secondary is not good. And they're going to be scoring. Speaking of so. stacks and people that we have not talked about, we talked about them a little bit in relation to uh, Deshaun Watson. Oh, we got some Twitter hate saying that we aren't on Deshaun Watson this week. Can you believe that? This man was on our permanent <laughs> hall pass list. We love this man. All right, We are just tempering our no, expectations, dude, one guys. Thing, one thing that you have to get used to, my uncle, is that you're going to get people every single day just wanting to show that they're right in your No, I, I love the guy, and it sounds like he's from H-Town. I'm also from H-Town yeah. as, a, as a kid. That's where I kind of grew up. So I feel him. I feel the love for Deshaun Watson. That's all I'm saying. We love him. But uh, I wanted to actually speak directly – on Kevin Hogan, okay? I'm actually liking him in in some stacks with uh, that Najuku. What, what's that tight end? You, you can pronounce it. Yeah, Najuku. I'm liking liking yeah. stacking him with, with Najuku and then going off on all the other spots and spending whatever we want. All so right. Th those are just let's, last let's go ahead and uh, 
<clears throat> let's go ahead and yeah, let's go ahead and read our lineup off. Here it is, guys: Brian Hoyer, Kareem Hunt, Leonard Fournette, Chris Hogan, Adam Thielen, John Brown, George Kittle, Jarek McKinnon, and Jaguars D, Ravens D, or Falcons okay, D. Thank you. <laughs> it's up yeah. to you. Uncle Craig yeah. says Ravens. Cam says. Jags, hey. I say Jags. And, and Cameron yeah, is I the professional, Jags. guys. I'm I'm the amateur. Right. All right. So uh, <laughs> listen listen to Cam ATL. Listen, no, I like Ravens too, but Jack I mean Jacksonville just this is a cash based lineup with upside. Jacksonville has the upside and the floor. I, I agree. You know what I I'm saying? That that. And for. and honestly Baltimore really just has the the floor that I see. So I'm with you. And right. okay, so we're done with with the lineup build, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it. We're gonna hit one other little segment here for the viewers, and we're gonna try to do this a little bit more regularly at the end of our videos. We don't want to do it at the beginning just because we know you're there for the lineup build. But we have some questions on our comments on our YouTube videos, so we want to start answering some of those for the entire audience. So we had this one comment come in from Ryan Bonhart. Bonhart. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, brother, but it's Ryan Bonhart. Uh, here's what he says. I guess what I mean is like how do you know you're going contrarian in GPP other than looking at projected ownership? Like what different, what differentiates a lineup enough? Should I just go crazy low-owned, i.e. most of my guys under 3% ownership, or is one or two guys at that level enough to do balance with the rest of the team with chalky high upside players? Um, okay, so there's a lot of parts to that question, and to answer that question, we're actually going to kind of review the Millionaire Maker lineup from last week, just to show you an example. All right, this Millionaire Maker lineup was Brian Hoyer at roughly 8%, Melvin Gordon at around 15 Aaron Jones at 5 which is crazy because it was known that he was a starter. I would have predict predicted him to be much higher than that. Odell Beckham at 9 AJ Green at 3.8. That was the difference right there. Uh, Dante Moncrief at 3.3, but he busted and only had 6.2 fantasy points, guys. George Kittle was the key to this lineup at 1.3%. And Tony Brown at 12.5, and then the Dolphins D. Um, so at 7%, sorry. So to answer your question, as far as GPP, you want to go – contrarian only in a few spots you do not have to go contrarian in the whole thing okay you want to play a, a mix of core guys like we have a big list of core plays this week that we want to mix in mix and match because you want to avoid misses that is the key to gpp you have to avoid misses right. you have to avoid busts it's not just about hitting the top top guy on every spot you need to avoid those misses, okay? It's like it's like picking a lock, okay? It's like like unscrambling a combination or, or something like that. You have to find the right keys and just miss those those duds. And the only way to do that is by mixing and matching right. the chalky core guys and getting the right combination, and then have them in that same lineup with a you know, low owned guy, like a pivot type of guy. Like this week I could see a pivot type of guy to be Melvin Gordon. Okay. We didn't give you Melvin Gordon or, or even Todd Gurley. We didn't give you Todd Gurley. We think that Fournette and Hunt will carry most of the ownership at that price range uh, for running back. So a good pivot would be to drop off and not yeah. uh, not carry those guys and hope that your guy does better and that one of these guys busts. So you and this is only this is only GPP guys. Don't, yeah, there's don't there's do no reason double yeah. ups and stuff. All right, no reason to take these kind of chances if you have a really good feeling about people and when you're playing your double ups in cash, just play them. Don't even worry about ownership in cash. Who cares? Okay, if if. People are going to be highly, highly played. Sometimes you have to bite the chalk. Like if we find out Matt Forte is going to be out officially and it's only going to be Elijah Maguire, he is going to be heavy chalk. Now in GPPs, we're fine not biting that chalk okay, and hope that that kid busts because that does happen. But a lot of times right. in cash, you would want to just bite the chalk and be like a free square. Everybody's going to be playing them. And you don't want to risk not playing them because you could basically be done right from the jump. So 
that, that's all we're saying. Uh, I, I hope that right. answered your question, man. Uh, let me let me just make sure. Uh, like let me it. read the parts again. You made good points, man. I think you I think you covered it well. I mean, too many people. There's just a lot of people like when they play tournaments, they right. overanalyze percentage owned. You know, they take it way too much to a whole nother level well, to and, where they're and, going. And the problem guys is that are just straight up stupid ownership. Nobody knows. So whatever site you go to, whatever tool you use, whatever whoever gives you right. that, they are giving you a projection. Okay, it's basically just coming from their butt, literally. All right, like yeah, it, it does. They do have analytics and calculations <laughs> right. of of going and putting it in, but it still doesn't necessarily mean it's going to come out right or close. Okay, and like if you would have asked me, and I would have put in my model and done all that stuff. Uh, Aaron Jones would have, I would have pictured him as being played a lot more than, than he was, you know? And so, so, I mean, even these projections can, can be off with late breaking news. Like you can be basing it off of like the projections from the whole week and then inactives come out at 1030 and the whole thing changes like that. Okay. And, and that's all, that's all I'm trying, trying to say is the projection yeah. of ownership is is kind of not – it's opinionated, and you don't need to be basing too much about it. You can tell which guys are going to carry more ownerships, and you can pivot off them. Like A.J. Green did not carry ownership. Did That was a shocker to me, 3.8% for A.J. Green. Uh, if I would have known that A.J. Green was only going to yeah. be played 3% yeah. owned, I would have played him 50%. And t- to give you guys an example of an A.J. Green-type player this week – I would say Julio Jones. I think he yeah, ends up being very low. Okay? And at 83, he's missing Mohamed Sanu. So in GPP, Julio is fucking Julio, sexy. Julio, we love that upside. So he, And he <laughs> might make it in some of our lines that we give out uh, yeah. for this Sunday. And he's a perfect example of GPP. Like, he is the AJ Green of this And Antonio league. Brown could get overlooked also. I, I could see that. Anyways, I hope that answered your question, Ryan. Uh, guys, make sure you hit up the comments yeah, in the future, and we'll try to answer any of these kind of complicated questions in more detail, and I uh, hope that helps. Yes, sir. Thank you guys for joining. As always, good luck with the line. If you guys want to join the uh, DFS squad, me, my uncle and I will be providing the VIP lines to our squad. Go to greenlightdfs.com if you want to join that, and good luck, everybody. We're Peace. out. Peace.